So welcome back future Kenyans from our mini break and as we said we have a special guest for you guys today. You guys she is an amazing woman. She is sitting right next to me over here. I don't even have to look at you. <laughs> she is none other than Ruth Ambogo, political analyst, youth policy governance expert. She was a lawyer in training, you guys. I don't think I can do her enough justice by introducing her so she can introduce herself. Ruth, how are you? Hey, you know, I should just hire you to do <laughs> this. When, I, when I'm going to the ground to look for votes, yeah? yeah it should be my cut and razor. <laughs> that is such a powerful introduction. Anyway, my name is Ruth Ambogo. Mm -hmm. Um, as you have rightfully mentioned, I wear quite a number of hats. Mm -hmm. I am um, a lawyer in training, mm -hmm. uh, a governance and policy, youth governance and policy expert. So basically looking at policy issues from the youth angle. Mm -hmm. I have been an advocate for women's rights, you know, the, the rights of young people to participate in governance, mm -hmm. to be included in political conversations and political spaces. Um, I am now uh, presently running an organization called Center for Advocacy and Awareness of the Rights of Youth and Women in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think what is the most important right now mm -hmm. is that I am an aspirant for the women representative seat of Higa County mm -hmm. or uh, what would now become women senator mm -hmm. if BBI, in case Building Bridges Initiative, uh, recommendations pass mm -hmm. after the referendum if we are to have that referendum so yes i am vying for a political seat and i think for any politician that is the most important introduction yes <laughs> yes, yes don't worry you already have three votes <laughs> for you, just for you thank you yes. so i don't now... know why alexis is speaking for me <laughs> <laughs> i don't know have... that thought <laughs> three votes i don't know <laughs> You have my vote fully. Thank you. And I know once I have yours, you can always convince everyone. For sure. Plus, 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 the, you know, plus the camera crew to vote for me. For sure. As artists, no problem. It's a good thing uh, she's mentioned uh, if if yes. BBI goes through. Yes. So let me ask a quick question. It's a bit off topic because we are going to talk about the BBI in, uh, in the next episode. Episodes to come. So let me ask BBI yes or no. If you just ask BBI yes or no. Say a term on BBI yes or no. BBI yes for me. Yes, for me. Okay, can you say that? You why? said you said that I should just say yes. <laughs> no, you know, that's, okay, that's I cool. was definitely hoping that you'd ask me why. Okay. Why? Because one, um, I participated in the process of uh, collection of views across the country mm -hmm. when the Building Bridges Initiative process started back in twenty. I think they started in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, collecting of views in twenty nineteen. I was part of a team of young people who went across. The country just listening to our fellow young people and then now went to the building bridges initiative task force and uh, made you know recommendations as to what we thought the youth or rather what the youth wanted as uh, in terms of changes or considerations to be done on behalf of the young people and then when the report came out for me as a young person who went before the task force i saw pretty much everything that we had requested for everything that we had presented as our views everything that we had lobbied for included within the document that is number one and then number two uh when i look at the bigger picture of building bridges initiative especially increasing the allocation of funds to the uh county governments uh mm -hmm. from you know 15 percent to 35 percent uh creating an allocation for members of county assembly a development fund for members of county assembly mm -hmm. uh the additional constituencies much as people would want to complain about the fact that all oh, these additional constituencies will increase our wage bill as a country and it's something that we are dealing with as a country i'm looking at it from a positive angle which is that there will be a further allocation of funds uh from you know with every new constituency that is created there's an allocation of funds of about 100 million shillings to every constituency that is created so that means more money to the to the to the constituencies more money for development projects more money to basically just um, uh, uh, what do we call sustain the evolution in, in in that sense yeah so for me it's a yes and honestly having been part of the process uh it, it would be sense if I was part of the process, made my recommendations, then my recommendations go through, and then I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for it. Yeah. Okay. But before we continue, I have, I have a question um, regarding the BBI. Yes. You said you guys have upped the seats on Parliament, but I want to know where, in, overall, how does the BBI give service to the Kenyans? 
You see, um, one thing that most people have complained about, uh, a lot of people have complained about is the fact that when you go to the, much as the evolution was supposed to bring about development way back to, I mean, way till the lowest level of administration, that is the world level, you there's no way you expect that there would be development at the world level mm -hmm. when the persons in charge of running the world themselves do not have a development fund. So when you ask me how will BBI uh, bring about development to the ordinary Mwanainchi, mm -hmm. the one thing that I tell you is that the increase in allocation of funds will directly reach Mwanainchi in, this, in what sense? For instance, as a member of uh, as a member of county assembly, if I am an MCA and I have my ward development fund, which is capped at five percent of the money that is allocated to my county government, mm -hmm. then I can be able to now reach now the young people who always ask me, "Oh, you are our MCA. Mm -hmm. What kind of development projects are you bringing to us?" Or this is the problem that we have as a young people. We need to be empowered in terms of sports and talent. We need to be. We need. We need. Uh, for example, we need assistance in setting up our businesses. Now, that fund given to a member of county assembly mm -hmm. will trickle down to the Monanchi because now he or she is able to address direct, directly the issues affecting the common Monanchi, yeah. you know? Okay, yeah. yeah, so there's that aspect. Yes. And then there's also the aspect of, um, you said that you guys have opened funds, you have opened development funds to help people in the marginalized areas. But you see, for me, I feel like if you guys come and tell me, okay, we are allocating... 500 billion towards probably people in northern Kenya. I'm not worried about the 500 billion. I'm worried about where the money is passing through because I feel like when the where the money that that money is passing through is when people get greedy mm -hmm. and they start misusing funds. So yeah. me, my question is: is there is there a way to convince us that? Where the money is passing. This money comes yeah. that it will actually reach the money yeah. engine. Yeah. No, I get that concern. And for me, I've always said that a lot of people who want to go against BBI are going against it not because BBI in itself is a bad document or that the, pro the propositions made therein are bad, but because they are mixing issues in the sense that you're mixing bad leadership mm -hmm. with, 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 uh, with uh, propositions that are being put forth to improve the lives of citizens. Yeah. Where the reality is that yes, for sure we have a problem and the problem is that there's massive corruption. Massive. Where I know that a lot of people are even asking themselves that yes, much as you're talking about increasing allocation of funds from 15% to 35%, mm -hmm. the 15% that we presently have, we're not feeling the impact of the same. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that that, that happens or one of the reasons that uh, we, real, we find that the 15% is not we're bringing about the impact or is not being used towards the development agenda that it ought to be used towards is because of corruption, mm -hmm. you know? And now this is where the burden lies and comes back to us as citizens, mm -hmm. where we ask ourselves that as citizens, mm -hmm. what kind of leaders are we electing in, you know? What kind of governors are we going to vote in? Because are we going to vote in governors who will, you know, squander the very money that is supposed to be used for development? Mm -hmm. Are we going to vote in members of county assembly who will take on their function mm -hmm. of holding their county government to account seriously or not, you know, because then if you vote in, for instance, a governor who will who is known for corruption, who will go and squander that particular money, it is again us to blame, you know, because yes. we are usually given a lot of options during elections. You're given options of persons who are serious about development, mm -hmm. persons who will come in and play with your money, mm -hmm. persons who will come in and bring about the change that you wish them to yes. bring about. But then we settle for the very same thugs who come in. And you know that money in Nakuja Mnaskia Badai mm -hmm. corruption scandals come up, and uh, you know so basically I think it boils down to the propositions are good, mm -hmm. but then for the propositions to make sense to us as the common Mwanainchi, mm -hmm. we need to vote in the right leaders come twenty twenty two. I just I just feel like um, for example we were speaking with about the situation or what happened in Uganda. Yes, mm how -hmm. uh, Bobi feels like the elections were not mm -hmm. rigged. So even, for example, in Kenya, how sure are we that uh, we vote, mm. the people we vote for are the ones who, but I mean, that's not to you, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. not you. that's not you. That's not Yeah. And in fact, allow me to correct him. You know, when he kept saying that, oh, you people are bringing this. Yeah, I, I'm not part of the yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just in the same <laughs> position as you are, yes. you know? Yes. Well, it's, it's good that you gave your contribution to yeah, the yeah, yeah, actually. Yes. And that means that we are represented mm -hmm. in, in very many ways that you would think, right? Yes, yes. Yes. But um, there's a, this question where now, let's say, we have the opportunity to become, uh, to take up those positions yes. in the government and say, like you're running right now. Yes, yeah? yes. And many people would question that and would be like, okay, this lady, she seems too young 
to you know <laughs> what yeah. experience do you have uh, when it comes to governance and, yeah. and leadership yeah. especially for our country or yeah. a county yeah. or you know yeah i think uh leadership is is all about uh, the qualities of i mean when you're looking at who is a leader mm -hmm. you analyze what are the qualities that i'm looking for in a leader i'm looking for a manager i'm looking for somebody who can be able to be creative in terms of looking for solutions mm -hmm. you know i'm looking for someone who can be able to provide direction mm -hmm. uh, for the people and i think that is what matters you know because um if, if you are to ask me that question i mean and and sometimes i get it you know people saying oh you know you, you might be too young for this mm -hmm. why don't you think about running for mca first and and all that and i tell them that you know across the world we've had uh, countries and we've had people uh, who have elected young people, very young people, yeah. into leadership positions. And Kenya is not even an exception. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know that Kenya in 2017 elected the youngest member of parliament at the age of 23, MP, member of parliament, mm -hmm. from I think it's Igembe or something like that, Paul Murigi. He was elected at the age of 23. The current governor for, um, uh, current governor, I think it's for Bomet County, mm -hmm. Stephen Sang, mm -hmm. was elected as a senator at the age of 28. Senator at the age of 28, he was the youngest senator elected in Kenya, mm -hmm. and then he went ahead and got elected as a governor mm -hmm. at the age of 32. So I don't think that age in any way determines whether you make a proper leader or not. Mm -hmm. It's all about do you really have the qualities of being a leader within yourself? And then also, uh, much as people would ask you, so what kind of experience do you have? I mean, any any form of experience is experience in itself. Yeah. For as long as, you know, it, within your earlier life, when you're growing up, you're in school, yeah. you are taking up positions of leadership, it means that people trusted you and people looked at you and so that you have the qualities of being a leader, you know. Yeah. Whether you are as a university, a student, a student uh, leader at the university mm -hmm. level, which I was, yeah. that in itself is evidence that you have some qualities of leadership within yourself, you know. Whether you are even a class prefect, you yeah. know, yeah. that in itself is a sign that mm -hmm. you have what it takes to become a leader. So I think age is one of the things that uh, a lot of us, it's unfortunate that actually people look at it, that age age is one of the things and that people consider, well. age and gender mm -hmm. is one of the things that people consider in terms of qualifications for who we should vote for as a leader or not. But then at the end of the day, when you consider that, you end up missing out on good leaders mm -hmm. in the name of I'm looking for a mature, an older person who is much more, mature and so i assume that by by virtue of them being older mm -hmm. they're better leaders you know we've had evidence of leaders who are way i mean way 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 old and when you look at the kind of leadership that they are providing their people or they're offering as compared to younger leaders mm -hmm. you cannot compare the same i'll just quickly give an example of our senate right now mm -hmm. our senate has um we are lucky enough to have a senate that has now what you would call youthful senators because mm -hmm. at the time they were being elected they were youth if yeah. you are to go by the standards of who is a young person mm -hmm. or rather who is a youth in yeah. Kenya mm -hmm. being uh, you know below the age of 35 at yeah. the time most of them okay not most of them a number of them had been elected when they were below the age of 35 you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about Sakaja yeah. I'm talking about Mutula Kilonzo mm -hmm. I'm talking about um, yeah. um, Jago is not is not in the Senate I'm just referring to the Senate mm -hmm. I'm talking about uh, Senator Malala mm -hmm. you know from Kakamega mm -hmm. and then now when you look at how this young or what now they're called as youthful senators, mm -hmm. the kind of representation and the quality of their representation within the Senate as compared to senators who are, you know, 70 years old, 80 years old, mm -hmm. the quality of engagement, the kind of ideas they bring forth on the floor of the Senate compared to the older senators, you ask yourself, is it it time for us to actually think about voting in mm -hmm. younger people? Because the younger people in a way have a way of resonating with the issues that are affecting the society, mm -hmm. you know, because they are either victims, you know. And then also the fact that um, the responsibility these days, when you look at uh, the societal responsibility mm -hmm. to take care of the family is slowly, slowly and slowly falling on the younger people. Mm -hmm. Now for myself, you know, being a firstborn, I come from a humble background, meaning that if I, the moment I begin, the moment I just begin to succeed, in a little capacity, yeah. the responsibility starts falling on me to take care of my siblings, you know, to take care of my siblings' school fees, mm -hmm. to support the family, you know. Mm -hmm. So age is not a measure for whether one is a leader or qualifies to become a leader. Or or but, though, or, but, but though I feel like there's still a problem, especially with our youth, yes. um, as much as we're really trying to invigorate people and rejuvenate to another people that are psych back, yes. there's also a problem of there are some youth who are just apathetic about the matters concerning mm -hmm. the government. Mm -hmm. They are very disinterested. 
they are very uh, they shunned that uh, whole system of being a leader. Do you feel like we there's a way in which we can counteract such problems with people who are disinterested? And, or as much as we are trying here, even with this future Kenya, do you think there's other ways we can counteract for disinterest among? Uh, you know, first thing is that I I always tell people in every forum, any form of engagement that I have, especially with the young people, I always tell them this one quote that has been outstanding in my life, and it's it's, it's a statement that I got from. I think he was a former IBC, one of those former IBC chair uh, chairmen. Um, he once said this statement that just changed how I look at leadership and the participation of young people in leadership. He said, um, he said this statement that you know, if you're not seated at the table, then you're definitely on the menu. If you're not seated at the table, for instance, let's assume we are at a dinner table. That this is a dinner table we are supposed to be having dinner. You know, if if we are the only ones seated at this particular table, there's a whole buffet meal over here. We are deciding that okay, now we are having we are having dinner, and then the rest, for, for instance, the camera crew is just observing us. You know, yeah. they'll definitely be on the menu. Us will be deciding. You know, me, I want this portion of ugali. You, this is the portion of nyama you will have. This is the portion of soup you'll have. You know, you will not be thinking about the person who's not seated at that particular table. You know, okay. if anything, you'll be deciding and saying, oh yeah, you know, if there are leftovers, we can we can. We can give out the leftovers to the neighbors who don't have, you know. So for as long as young people are not seated at that decision-making table, yeah. we will always be on the menu, you know. Yes. We'll That's always true. be told, okay, so now, as we have decided, like for instance, this BBI thing, yeah? yeah? They'll come and tell you, okay, so as we have decided, this is what we want. We want additional constituencies. We want we want um, a location of funds to be increased to this number. We want this, we want this. We want. Then they say, the young people, they are going to give you a seven-year tax holiday, you know. Mm-hmm. Or for the young people, we are going to give you a youth ministry. Mm-hmm. Or rather, what, what was it? A youth um, com- commission or something like that. We'll give you a youth commission or something like that. So if we are not sitting at that particular table, we can't even start and say, we can't even, us sitting on that particular table will get us to the point of saying, okay, yes, fine, you're going to give an additional, uh, you're going to give this number of additional uh, uh, constituencies. Mm -hmm. As young people, had we had an active voice on that table, you'd have a young person coming and saying, of those additional constituencies, Mm -hmm. we as the youth are saying, if you don't give us this percentage, Mm -hmm. if you don't assure us that, this percentage will be taken up by young people. Yeah. We are not passing that BBI. Yeah. And you know that is what the women. Uh, that's what the women, like women, did. Because yeah. remember, in this, when you when you're looking at BBI, for example, mm-hmm. there are gains for different people. Mm-hmm. There is what you would call the gains for women, mm-hmm. gains for devolution, mm-hmm. gains for youth. You know, gains for. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, the women walika kwameza, and they said, "Ask guys, if you don't give us A, B, C, D, we are not going to support it." Mm-hmm. And what in turn happened is that everything that they demanded for mm-hmm. was given unto them. And how does this now translate into the political conversation for young people? Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is that for as long as we are not engaging on that particular table where yeah. people are discussing mm-hmm. politics, mm-hmm. people will always give us handouts. You know, mm-hmm. our leaders will always give us leftovers. You yes, know? Yes. Our issues will never be taken yes, care of. So yes. we have to sit at that particular table. Mm-hmm. And sitting on that table, what does it mean to sit on that table? Mm-hmm. Sitting on that table sometimes means when something is happening that is when something is wrong that's going on in the country mm-hmm. uh, i mean something wrong is going on in the country mm-hmm. you have a twitter account mm-hmm. tweet about it join that hashtag and say you know what like for for instance a good example is um, recently there was this case of these young people who were making beds uh, during covid period yes. and then they trended you know and then the yeah. president uh, 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 was it the, i think the president the president promised uh, that he would buy they would procure beds from them like about 500 hospital beds from them you know so as a way of empowering them and then now when the time to be paid came this is a story that happened this past week yeah? when the time to be paid came suddenly they're saying at oh we found out these guys have a criminal record so we are not going to pay them Imagine you've you've already you've you've come and loans mumeomba as young people mume tishama loans mm-hmm. you've borrowed those loans to be able to uh to to supply the beds that were needed mm-hmm. and then when the payment com- time time comes they're saying all oh, these guys have a criminal record you know yes, yes. so it took the voice of young people on Twitter yes. to tweet about it and say this is very wrong you know yeah. by the time you are engaging these people number one had you not done yeah. your background <laughs> check yeah. and then also number two even if they had a criminal even if they had a criminal record mm-hmm. isn't it a good thing that now you're empowering them yes. to be able to you know stand on the on yes. their own feet do, do business something mm-hmm. positive 
isn't it should it even the government adopt the mentality of trying to rehabilitate young people yes. who you know who've had criminal records mm-hmm. and it was the young people who went on twitter and tweeted about it yeah. and that change you know that change came about so yeah. twitter is a platform mm-hmm. you know even instagram is a platform mm-hmm. um uh, facebook is a platform mm-hmm. sometimes you know just engaging your you're finding out who is your mca yeah. when you're back at home who is your mc how do you engage him forming you know groups where you actually sit down and, and discuss and say us as a group as a group from this particular ward yes. we think that all oh, insecurity can be resolved in this particular way mm-hmm. sitting your leader down and telling them if you do not resolve insecurity you don't have our votes you know yeah. joining a campaign team is, is one way to engage the politicians yeah. basically there are so many ways so of engaging ways you know yeah. and we need to get on board as young people because at the end of the day people are sitting down every single day and making decisions about our lives yeah. and if we don't tell them that we are interested in these decisions that they are making about us, Mm -hmm. they will decide whatever they want for you.